Welcome, everyone. My name is Kevin Oshiro, and I'm a member of the Application Engineering Group at the MathWorks. The objective of this example is to provide you an overview of how to perform hybrid electric vehicle plant modeling. I will go over three topics in this example. First, I'll cover types of models, then I'll cover MathWorks modeling tools, and finally, I'll go over best practices for HEV modeling. First, let's discuss the three major types of modeling used for system-level simulation of hybrid electric vehicles. They are first principles modeling, data-driven modeling, and behavioral modeling. First principles modeling is where you use one or more known physical equations to model a component or system. An example of first principles modeling is longitudinal vehicle dynamics. This is a free body diagram of a one degree of freedom vehicle moving in a longitudinal direction with all the forces acting upon it. The force equation also includes the force of drag acting upon the vehicle. Another example of first principles modeling is a planetary gear. Here are the dynamic equations of the planetary gear. And these are the kinematic and geometric equations for the planetary gear. The next type of model is a data-driven model. This is a steady state or static map which is implemented in Simulink using a lookup table. You can also add dynamics to these tables using a transfer function. This method is used because first principles or physics uh, could be difficult to derive. Detailed dynamics is not necessary for the type of simulation you are performing. Or you need a fast simulating model, such as in a hardware and loop uh, simulation environment. An example of a data-driven model is for a mapped-based internal combustion engine. For system-level simulation, a detailed model of an engine, uh, for example modeling the in-cylinder combustion dynamics, is not necessary. So maps such as commanded torque versus engine speed and actual torque, or commanded torque versus engine speed and fuel mass flow, uh, as shown, can be used. Models such as these will provide good accuracy for system-level simulation modeling and also have the benefit of simulating quickly. Another example of a data-driven model is using an efficiency map to represent the combination of an electric machine and inverter. The efficiency map for the combined machine and inverter is indexed by speed and torque. It is also bounded by a maximum torque versus speed curve. Models such as this are well suited for system level energy consumption simulations because we are primarily concerned with tracking losses that occur in the system. So in this scenario, it is not necessary to model the high speed power electronics switching dynamics that occur in a real inverter. Finally, we will discuss behavioral modeling. With a behavioral model, you are not modeling the actual physics, but making the model produce a similar dynamic response. This is done because it may be difficult to model the actual first principles or physics. An example of a behavioral model is to represent a battery by making it into an equivalent circuit of one or more uh, resistor, capacitor, or RC pairs. It is difficult to model the electrochemistry that is actually occurring in a physical battery. However, by using an equivalent circuit scheme, you can produce a very similar dynamic behavior as a real battery. Shown here is a figure from a MathWorks white paper uh, that shows how a behavioral battery model is able to match real test data. If you do an internet search on MathWorks battery modeling, you will find the MathWorks webpage containing this content. Another example of a behavioral model is modeling a clutch. Shown here is the abstraction of state machine logic of a bidirectional clutch that shows how it transitions from its locked to unlocked states. Uh, within each state, appropriate first principle equations are applied. Also, keep in mind that it is very common to mix and combine these modeling techniques. Uh, for example, some first principle models utilize parameters that are based on data from lookup tables. Uh, the equivalent circuit battery example I showed earlier is a good example of combining first principles, uh, for example, that uh, equivalent circuit network, uh, and uses data from lookup tables for the voltage, resistor, and capacitor elements, which produces the dynamic behavior of a real battery. I also want to discuss the challenges associated with parameterizing models. Sometimes, obtaining the physical parameters needed for models can be difficult if you do not work for an automotive manufacturer or component supplier. Uh, you may have to use resources such as web pages or published papers. At times, you will have to make educated guesses. 
data-driven models will require a supplier providing the data, or you may have to use uh, advanced techniques such as parameter estimation to generate the data yourself. Let's now discuss plant modeling tools. MathWorks provides two products which can assist you with your modeling of hybrid electric vehicle systems, the powertrain block set and Simscape. Both are designed to be part of the Simulink environment. First, I'll give you an overview of the powertrain block set. Some of the key features of the powertrain block set include a library of building blocks that include energy storage, drivetrain, propulsion, transmission, vehicle dynamics, and vehicle scenarios. Another great feature of the powertrain block set is that it contains several pre-built reference applications, including a conventional powertrain, an electric vehicle, several type of HEVs, and engine dynamometers. Let's take a brief look at the product. So let's open up Simulink from the main MATLAB window. And I'm going to open up a blank Simulink model so that I can go to the Simulink library browser. And once we're in the library browser, you can uh, select the powertrain block set. And then you can see its sub-libraries uh, here. Um, just FYI, uh, there are a lot of blocks in each of these um, li sub libraries, so I won't go through each of them in detail. Um, but the idea is as you're building your system, um, you know, let's say you're building up a drivetrain and you need uh, either clutches or uh, different type of gears or differentials, um, longitudinal wheels with integrated brakes, uh, if you need, you know, batteries or DC DC converters. Um, there's also electric motors and their corresponding controllers. Uh, powertrain block set also has very nice uh, engine models. So they have both mapped and dynamic uh, type of engine uh, components here for both uh, spark ignition and compression ignition and also controllers as well. And there's also uh, transmission components such as torque converters and these um, uh, kind of behavioral uh, system, uh, transmission system models here for things like automated manuals or dual clutch transmissions. So the idea is that you uh, use these blocks and you construct your vehicle accordingly to whatever system you're trying to build. Uh, but the uh, one benefit of powertrain block set is that um, there's already pre-built examples uh, completed for you in the help menu. So from either the MATLAB or Simulink help menu, we can go to the documentation home and we can select the powertrain block set and go into the example section we'll find these reference application projects so here here are different vehicle type types such as a conventional vehicle uh, several types of hybrid electric vehicles uh, a battery electric vehicle as well as a compression and spark ignition uh, engine dynamometers so if you want to explore these or if, if you want to build um, uh, you know, a model, let's say you have a, uh, some type of input power split, there's already one in here. So you can click on the open example link and you'll be brought to the help documentation page, uh, which explains how this uh, reference model was built and what's inside of it uh, and the control algorithms used. And at the very top, there's a link here uh, that if you click on it, it will open up uh, the model for you. And now the reference application model will open. Um, again, it's structured as a uh, system level uh, vehicle simulation. And of interest for this example for modeling, let's go into the passenger car. And here we can see that there's different uh, subsystems for the engine model, the electrical plant models, and the drivetrain. So we can look at the electrical plant models and see how uh, we wire up the battery and DC-DC converter. Uh, you can also see us using a motor and generator. These should be mapped uh, machine models here. And we can also go into the drivetrain uh, re referenced model. So again, this was an input power split. So what you'll see is you'll see a planetary gear uh, as the, the basis of this transmission. Um, it's also coupled to another simple gearbox here. Uh, inside these drivetrain 
reference applications. We try to make it easier for you uh, because if you want to configure a front, uh, rear, or all-wheel drive vehicle, you can do so with this um, with this pull-down menu. And what this what that pull-down menu will drive is the selection of um, these variant subsystems. So a variant subsystem is denoted by uh, these uh, icons here with these overlapping squares in the lower left corner. And if we go inside, we'll see that three um, three variants exist at the same time, but the one that is active is highlighted. And if we go in here, we can see the differential block. And this is the same for the, the wheels and brakes. So if we go in uh, one of these, the active system, we'll see the front and rear axle wheels and brakes and how they're wired up and modeled. And there's also the vehicle, uh, the longitudinal vehicle that's uh, already wired up for you. So you can uh, use this as an example. Um, if it's close to what you're trying to build, then you can use this and, and uh, as a basis and then customize it as needed. And you can also hit the play button and then you'll see the, uh, the model simulate. So without making any changes, um, if we hit the play button here, we will see uh, a, a scope uh, pop up and we can watch the vehicle simulate. So the model will begin simulating and a uh, scope will come up. Uh, you can then see the vehicle um, following the drive cycle uh, trace. And you can see the engine, motor, generator speeds and torques as it's driving along its drive cycle. You can see the instantaneous battery current, uh, the battery state of charge, and also its calculated miles per gallon equivalent. So having these models already built for you um, is a nice benefit uh, because you don't have to start from scratch. You can use this model structure and then customize it for your own needs and then you can run your own simulations. There are several benefits of using the powertrain block set. It can accelerate your system development process. All the components in the libraries are open, meaning you can look under the mask to see how the model is constructed. Uh, there is also documentation for every component. The pre-built reference applications are typical of what you find in industry. They can be used as templates uh, so that you can customize and reparameterize them to match your own system. Finally, the models simulate very quickly, ensuring that you can run them in a real-time environment. Another great benefit of the powertrain block set are the included engine models, components, and controllers. For HEV system modeling, it is important to have an accurate internal combustion engine model. Powertrain block set has mapped engine blocks, which you can parameterize with your own data. You can create dynamic engine models. For example, you can use the powertrain block set flow and turbo machinery blocks to model the air path dynamics. And you can connect in your own CAE model, such as GT Power. These models also follow the same calibration procedures as done in industry. The next product we will discuss is Simscape. Simscape is a physical modeling tool that allows you to build physical systems in multiple domains, such as electrical, mechanical, hydraulic, and thermal. It also has vertical libraries such as driveline, electronics, power systems, fluids, and multi-body. For HEV modeling, you will typically use a mix of the first four libraries. Simscape driveline and electronics can be used for system level modeling. Power systems is used when modeling detailed three-phase electrical systems, and fluids can be used to model cooling and thermal management type systems. Here is a summary of the differences of physical modeling using Simulink versus Simscape. Simulink uses signal-based modeling. This means it has causality denoted by input and output ports. Let's use this RC circuit as an example. In Simulink, this RC circuit can be modeled using a transfer function. Simscape uses an a-causal connection scheme, which enables bidirectional flow of energy between components. For example, the RC circuit model in Simscape is built using physical components and connected as a network, just like the schematic. If another RC branch is added, the causal simulink model has to be re-derived as shown. But the Simscape model can be updated to reflect the change shown in the schematic. When physical networks in Simscape are built, 
The system level equations are formulated automatically, solved simultaneously, and already have the following physical domains included. Uh, this includes the Simscape language, which allows the creation of custom components or physical domains. Now, let's take a quick look at the Simscape libraries. Let's go back to our Simulink library browser and select Simscape so we can look at each of its uh, underlying libraries. Simscape itself consists of a foundation library and uh, it comes with each of these 10 physical domains that you see here, such as electrical, gas, and hydraulic. If you go into any of these physical domains, uh, you'll notice that it's separated out uh, by sources, sensors, and elements, um, elements being the physical component. And if you double click on uh, any of these blocks, you will see a parameterization window, which gives you a description of the block, uh, the parameters being used. And again, if you click on the help button, you will be brought to our help documentation article uh, for that component, which provides a detailed description of how the model was made uh, and its associated parameters. And please keep in mind um, that anything in the foundation library uh, also includes uh, source code, open source code. So if you click on this uh, link, you will be brought to a MATLAB file uh, and it describes uh, and shows how this model is made. And you are free to uh, copy and use those as templates uh, to create your own models. Um, and savvy users can also create their own physical domains. Next, let's look at some of the uh, vertical libraries. Um, let's start with the Simscape driveline. In Simscape driveline, there are sub-libraries that include uh, items such as different type of brakes, um, different type of clutches, different couplings or drives, um, such as torque converters or a flexible shaft. Uh, there's also a generic engine uh, or abstract engine models. There are several type of gear models. Uh, there's also uh, tire models as well as a longitudinal vehicle body uh, model. And the transmission library has uh, templates for several type of uh, transmissions. The next product we'll discuss is Simscape Electronics. Um, for HEV uh, modeling users, you may be interested in things uh, such as a uh, battery model or a DC-DC converter. They also have models of different type of uh, motors, such as a DC motor or an induction motor um, or a servo motor, uh, which is uh, essentially the mapped motor model and the powertrain block set. The Fluids product uh, is made specifically for modeling uh, different type of uh, fluid systems. Um, this would be great if you're trying to model some kind of hybrid electric vehicle uh, cooling system, um, like for your batteries or your power electronics. So if you need heat exchanger type of models, or if you need um, pumps or valves, uh, these type of uh, models exist uh, under Simscape Fluids. Uh, and finally, for Simscape power systems, this is great for modeling uh, three-phase uh, electrical systems. So there are a lot of models for different type of machines. Um, and you can even get the models for the power electronics or semiconductor components. Um, so they have things like inverters or converters as well. So next, what we'll do is we'll go into the uh, help menu so that we can take a look at some uh, pre-made Simscape based models. If we go down to Simscape driveline and to the examples section, um, we can see that Simscape driveline has different type of vehicles and transmissions um, of interest. Let's go to this hybrid powertrain section here. And we can see that there are already models built for a two-mode uh, power split, parallel, and series hybrid transmission. Um, just for example's sake, let's go to the power split transmission um, uh, model, and we can see that there's a help article uh, that explains what that this model is and what it does. 
It's basically um, a generic structure for a power split transmission. If we click on the open model link, the model will open. And then we can see that this model is built uh, with Simscape components. Um, uh, there's some nice benefits to using Simscape for modeling because each of the physical domains are color coded. Um, the electrical domain in this case is blue, while the mechanical rotation, uh, rotational domain is in green. And the interconnections are, are much simpler in Simscape uh, because you can build these um, systems together just like you would in a schematic. It's a, it's a networked uh, based modeling approach where you just connect uh, you know, components together. Um, and if we hit the play button, This is a, a, a very simple test case where I believe the vehicle is just uh, accelerating and then decelerating. So if we look in this scope, uh, we can see the blue line is the, uh, the target and the yellow is the, uh, the vehicle speed. So you can see it's uh, at steady state and then it accelerates up to a certain speed uh, and then it uh, comes back down to its original steady state speed there. Um, this also has some scripts built in it. So if you want to uh, either plot the power or plot the electrical losses, you can do that. If you uh, hit that button, uh, a script will launch and it'll, it'll bring up a plot for you so you can see how the uh, motor uh, and engine were used as it went through this uh, acceleration and deceleration uh, maneuver. So using Simscape uh, can be a very powerful tool if you want to do some quick um, model building. Uh, so if you want to build some architectures quickly, uh, this is a, is a good tool to do so. Simscape has several major benefits. First, it allows you to efficiently model multiple physical domains. Shown here is an example of an HEV model with electrical, mechanical, and thermal systems all interconnected. It also allows you to build models efficiently because you can create schematic-like models using physical connections. This makes building complex systems easier. And finally, there is extensive documentation and help examples. Please keep in mind that while there is some cross-functionality between powertrain block set and Simscape, they are meant to be complementary technologies. The powertrain block set has uh, focuses on signal-based or causal modeling, uh, empirical or data-driven modeling, detailed engine modeling, and it contains pre-built reference applications uh, for system-level model architecture. Uh, the Simscape focus is on connection-based or a-causal modeling, uh, first principles-based modeling, multi-domain modeling, and it has building blocks for user-defined content. So please keep in mind that you can use both products together. Um, that is very common, and you should use the uh, product which is most appropriate for your use case. So to give you an example of how you can use powertrain blocks and in Simscape together, I've included a model in the training material. Um, it's the model denoted as the uh, HEV input power split uh, powertrain block set in Simscape. Uh, please read the uh, readme associated readme file uh, so you know how to open and run the model. But I already have this model open. Um, note that it's in the uh, closed loop system level simulation um, style that we've been looking at for the other powertrain block set models. Uh, the big difference is that now we have this plant model selector button. And if we double click on it, you'll get a pull down menu that will allow you to switch between um, different plant modeling types. So either Simulink based or Simscape based. Uh, and note that the Simulink based modeling is the powertrain block set. Um, so what this uh, button drives is if we go into the passenger car, uh, we'll now see that the electrical plant and the drivetrain uh, subsystems uh, are variant subsystems denote, denoted by the overlapping squares. And if we go in here, we can see that there's two variants. Uh, this one would be Simulink and this one would be Simscape. So if we go back and select Simscape and hit OK, and we go back into the electrical plant model, now note that the Simscape variant is the highlighted active one. And if you look inside the Simscape variants, we can see that Simscape blocks are used. Uh, Sim Simscape driveline and Simscape electronics were uh, the blocks used to make this model. Um, and you can see the, the color-coded 
um, physical domains as well as the the network connections to make um, uh, to build this model just like a schematic. Okay, and the same is uh, the same occurs in the drivetrain model. So we can see how um, you know this input power split looks with the Simscape driveline components. So we can see the planetary gears that are modeled, uh, as well as the differential, uh, the wheels and brakes, and the vehicle. I simulated both the powertrain block set and Simscape plant model variants and plotted the results. Note that I tried to use the same level of fidelity of blocks for each major component such as motors, tires, and vehicle dynamics. The battery model and powertrain block set in Simscape have slightly different modeling fidelity. This is the reason why there is some discrepancy between the state of charge. Other than this difference, the two type of plant models match very closely. The speeds and torques of the engine, generator, and motor line up well. Now that we have covered the MathWorks products uh, that assist you in building HEV plant models, let's discuss some best practices for getting started. When getting started for the first time, use a template or example from the help menu, as I have already shown. Review the examples in the help menu for uh, the powertrain block set and Simscape driveline. For system level simulation, start with a powertrain block set reference application. This is because these reference applications provide a very good foundation of system level model architecture. The controller and plant connections are already provided. It uses reference models and variant subsystems for modularity. This was shown previously uh, in the example. Uh, the input-output layers are separate from the application layer, and it uses simulating projects for a model organization. You can use these reference applications as a template and re-parameterize and customize them to meet your needs. Here are some best practices for creating new models. Use the model fidelity needed for the purpose of your simulation. The ends of the modeling fidelity spectrum are abstract or low fidelity. Uh, which was highlighted in this presentation versus detailed or high fidelity. Note that in general, there is a trade-off between computational time versus model fidelity. The more detailed models typically take longer to simulate. If you are starting a brand new model or subsystem, start small. Build your model slowly. Simulate and analyze results before adding more blocks or systems. Uh, you can create test harness models where you simulate them with open loop inputs and verify the outputs. This functionality is also included with the Simulink test product. I would recommend using Simscape if you are already familiar with Simscape or have existing Simscape models, uh, need to model multiple physical domains, um, if you want to quickly build up many HEV plant topologies or complex system topologies. Um, shown here is an example from the Simscape driveline transmission template of a nine-speed transmission. It has six clutches and four planetary gear sets this type of model is well suited for Simscape. This concludes the introduction to HEV plant modeling. We cover different types and methods to create HEV component models, showed how the powertrain block set and Simscape tools can be used for HEV modeling, as well as best practices for getting started and creating new models. I would recommend that you go through the help document sections for powertrain block set and Simscape and take the time to review the help examples. Also experiment with the models and try to create your own. When first performing HEV modeling, there is a bit of a learning curve, but with practice, you will be able to create your own systems. Thank you again for watching this presentation. Please watch the next example on how to develop and implement HEV control strategies.